girls, welcome to General Hospital MV, my GH after show. I do have to keep it short this week because my uncle unexpectedly came for a visit and I don't want to be an asshole, so I'm going to rush through this. First of all, let's talk about Frizz's wedding. You guys know that I don't like Franco and Liz, but I will say that the reception was actually pretty sweet. I enjoyed watching it. Of course, you had Cameron performing and he was ace, and then you had Obrecht being drunk, and I just love drunk Obrecht. Her telling Franco that she was lonely, I was like, oh, give her a love interest. And of course she got pushed off the boat. Who do we think did it? I don't think it was any of the main suspects. I think it's someone that's, you know, out of the way that we don't know about yet. Side note, Terry looked absolutely gorgeous. You need to use her more, GH. And of course the main event of the wedding reception, Hayden Barnes returned. Oh, I am so Happy, it felt like I announced it forever ago that she was coming back, and now she's finally here. And boy, was I surprised when she planted one on Jax. I did not see that coming. I mean, to be honest, I was a little confused as to why Jax was at Elizabeth and Franco's wedding in the first place. I mean, he doesn't like Franco, and he and Elizabeth aren't exactly friends, so I was really confused at first, but if he was Hayden's date? Well, even so, I don't know. They, like, Elizabeth didn't know that Hayden was coming, so... Huh? Did Jackson and Elizabeth's friendship happen on screen or off screen, or was it just really bad writing? Ugh. Anyway, by the end of the week, we did learn that Hayden and Jax aren't really a thing. She was just trying to make Finn jealous, of course. And obviously, there are a lot of scenes that still have to play out with Hayden and Finn. Specifically, scenes about their baby. Where is the baby? Actually, the psychic that Ava hired to help her reach Kiki did tell Finn that he's about to get more women than he can handle. So I wonder if their baby is a girl. Hmm. But going back to Hayden and Jax, they do seem to be working together, and it has something to do with Crimson. I'm definitely intrigued. All right, let's quickly jump into Oscar's will reading. Now, it was very sweet and sentimental and, you know, about what I expected until the very end, where apparently he left his ELQ shares to Shiloh. Why? Why must you bring him in this story? I mean, there was a stopgap because after that will, Oscar did make the Kilimanjaro project that he put his shares into, so there's a bit of a leeway there for Alexis and Diane to do some uh, groundwork. But why? Oh, it's so irritating. When he showed up looking all smug, I was so glad when Drew pushed him to the ground. What was funny is that pretty much everyone put their hands on Shiloh this week. I mean, first Michael grabbed him at the Metro Court, and then Drew pushed him at the Quartermain House. And then we got Lucas going after him too when he was showing up to the hospital to get his DNA results. We'll get into that in just a second here. Sam brought her evidence against Shiloh to the PCPD and Robert and Mac were not making it easy, especially Robert. I'm surprised because Robert usually bends the rules a lot more, so this is so out of character for him, but I guess he did have a point in saying that it might work against them. So then Jason shows up with Harmony in tow. Of course she was let free to give evidence against Shiloh. And that was enough to get Shiloh arrested. Seeing him arrested after Lucas like knocked him out or like pushed him down or choked him, whatever he did, was priceless. It was all like in the same minute. Shiloh didn't even get to see his test results either, which is kind of good, I guess, but kind of bad because Lucas ripped it up before anyone else saw it either. Please end our misery already. Oh, it's so annoying. The story has dragged on enough. Anyway, last but not least, let's talk about Peter and Maxie. I know, I never do, but like, we kind of have to because they actually managed to get to Dante even though they didn't actually show him. Dante appears to try to commit suicide. I think he shot himself. That's what I gathered anyway. With that said, here's my question to you. We've been in limbo with Dante for a long time now. Would you rather him continue to be in limbo by putting him in a coma, at least having him back home in Port Charles, or do you want him just recasted? I mean, Obviously Dominic is not coming back, but having Lulu have to wait in limbo for this guy, it's not working out, man. I mean, Dante and Lulu weren't the most interesting couple, but Lulu just being in limbo and kind of doing these silly stories just to pass time, it's not working. You gotta do something about this. Do you want him comatose? Do you want him dead? Or do you want him recasted? Let me know in the comments below. And I gotta end the video here because I think my family's just getting back now. So if you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Hey folks, sorry I had to keep it so short this week. Let's continue the conversation and talk about things I missed down in the comments. See you there.